whenever I hear Bella Sara mentioned around these parts, it's always like, oh, this obscure little horse girl game on the internet with an obscure card collecting element, don't know if you've heard of it. And I always think, oh honey, you don't get it. Now, I am from a region of Europe that is multilingual, and so I admittedly tend to have a disproportionate experience of any franchise, as my country will import merchandising and content from multiple regions. For all my childhood passions, we would basically get at least double the content, sometimes more. And so, I may have an inaccurate view of how big Bella Sara really was, Nevertheless, it is worth mentioning that there was a time in the late noughties where it was hard to avoid Bella Sara. But first, for the uninitiated, what the hell was Bella Sara? Bella Sara was, in essence, an obscure horse girl game on the internet. The magical world of Bella Sara was created by Gitta Odder, a Danish social worker who was looking to create a trading card game for young girls that was wholesome and low stakes. Each card featured artwork of a horse, its name, a registration code, and an inspirational quote, and would eventually feature details such as the rarity meter or the series icon. As the legend goes, Gitta named this game for her daughter Sarah's horse, Bella. The then very basic website for Bella, where you could get to know the different cards and horses and play a basic jumping game, would evolve into Bella Sara in 2006. In this version of the website, you could register your horses, take care of them in the online stables, play a range of games accessed through the world map, and collect in-game items. This would remain the principle behind the gameplay until the introduction of Bella Sara Adventures in 2009. Besides the online game, however, there were a range of tie-in products, such as board games, DS games, PC games, toys, playsets, paint-by-numbers, puzzles, magazines, etc., not to mention the mini card series and collectible tins. I consider myself a pretty hardcore fan of Bella Sara, although the bar is more of a trotting pole given the blank looks I get from most people when talking about this franchise. Even so, there's actually a lot of stuff I never interacted properly with. The PC game, the DS games, the play sets, and I have somehow never read the Bella Sara Bibliothèque Horrors books, which is highly out of character and I can't account for it. So I decided that the best way for me to present this franchise without trying and failing to be comprehensive about all the history, the lore and merchandise is to simply recount my experience of it. So. Journey with me to the magical world of Bella Sara. So, I've done some detective work, and it appears that my first ever Bella Sara card was Ghost. He was part of a promotional series of cards promoting Bella Sara's second series, and was one of six to be given out with the first few issues of the French language Bella Sara magazine. The Bella Sara magazine existed in four languages, Czech, French, German, and Russian. They were typical of what you might expect a horse girl magazine from this time to be, with inter-franchise references, plenty of horsey facts and games, posters to make your bedroom walls the prettiest, comics and stories, and if you were lucky, a promo card attached face down to the inside cover. Promotional cards were exactly what they sound like, there to promote a new series of cards, and they could be found in other merch such as puzzles, tins and value boxes, magazines, or even given out at events or stores. And though he was the first I received, Ghost was not the first horse I registered online. I remember that first time very clearly, as my dad helped me make an account, register my horses, and then accidentally spend all my horseshoes on an ugly painting for my room. I think it was either Saga or Moonlight that I was registering. Moonlight introduces us to the concept of shinies. Like with a lot of card collecting games, Bellasara capitalized on its market by introducing foil versions of their cards. 
In the case of Moon Knight here, it's only her moon that's shiny, but typically the entire artwork would be covered, sometimes with exciting patterns, for example native lights and its fireworks. For years, I stored my then favourite cards and my shinies in my fancy Bella Sara binder. This one here, in fact. However, sometime in the mid-2010s, my sister decided she wanted to display her K-pop boys in there instead, so they're all like missing. I hope you're happy, Exos Kai. My getting into Bella Sara started a little Bella Sara revolution at my school. Suddenly, all the girlies were playing Bella Sara because they had seen it from me. I remember you did not actually need to register to play the mini games or explore the map, but if you did register, you could keep your horses in your stable and have your own home to decorate, two rooms to start with, but you could buy more. I think the game gave you one horse, but that was it. Ways to get the in-game currency of horseshoes were quite limited, so without the cards, there wasn't a huge lot you could do. At least at the time, before people started making databases for the codes. My best friend and I were both horse girlies, and I'd helped her make her own account, and would give her any duplicate cards I would receive. But obviously, through this method, she would not receive the at the time rarer horses, the pegasi and water creatures, or foals, for whom there were different stables, for example. So I had also given her my login details so that she could play with my horses as well. And then suddenly, everyone in school knew my login details. It was a whole betrayal. I came home crying and my dad helped me change my password before one of those girls could and take over my account. This was all second series era. The next card series I started to collect was, I believe, mythology. In the US and Scandinavia, Bella Sara Northern Lights, a series based on Norse and Celtic mythology, and Bella Sara Ancient Lights, based on Greek and Roman mythology, were two separate releases of 55 regular cards each. However, both were combined and released exclusively in the rest of Europe as mythology in 2007. This is a good point to get into some lore. The story of Bella Sara is set in the magical floating continent of North of North, the ancestral homeland of all creatures equine, that floats on the Sea of Light, Ouroboros, watched over by Sarah, the goddess of horses. North of North was once protected by the Valkyries, led by the brave Sigga, daughter of Roland. Sigga built Roland's guard and populated its stables with a herd that came to be known as the Northern Lights. Sigga watched over both the herds of Northern and Ancient Lights in her estate, come to be known as Trail's End, our game map. Sigga would eventually be banished from North of North by her Valkyrie sisterhood for falling in love with a mortal man. Or, according to later lore, she was banished to Earth by the Old Father, the King of Gods, for interfering in the fate of a mortal man. Since her banishment, the Herds and the Valkyries await a leader who can unify them and restore Trail's End to its former glory. Let me talk a little about my mythology faves. Achilles, Diana, Venus, Flora, obviously, and Bifrost, who was my first Pegasus. See, there were different stalls for the different types of horses. The regular setup for, um, I guess, the Earth Ponies. This cute little stall for the foals. The aquarium for the water horses. And then the best one, the sky stables for the flying horses. Anyway, my first Pegasus was Bifrost, and I still remember the surprise and delight of discovering that there were different types of stables when I first put his code in. The other thing we are yet to talk about are the energy cards. Energy cards were cards that instead of horses had objects on them. Their codes unlocked the objects in-game which you could use to decorate your cottage. Your cottage had two basic rooms, a living room with a big fireplace and a sunroom, I guess? You could purchase more rooms through the bazaar, as well as a whole array of home decor. Mythology had 20 energy cards, the one I remember best being the water well, although the primrose lamppost looks quite nice too and I'm sad I never had it. My favourite childhood collection was Native Lights. The lore of Native Lights is that goddess Sarah and her steed Bella once upon a time travelled across the Ouroboros to Earth and met the people. The people lived with great respect for their environment, and Sarah was touched by their stories. Upon returning to North of North, Sarah named very special horses after the people whom she had met. 
Each card in this series was named therefore after different Indigenous American communities. Each horse had an animal friend, and I have no way of confirming this, but I could swear as well as the horse you could unlock the animal companion with these cards, or some store decor. Now, it's not really my place to say, I would be interested in a more informed opinion, but to me, it seems that Native Lights has some failings. The one that stands out to me is that it inadvertently plays into the long-standing issue of Native Americans being dehumanized in pop culture, sometimes quite literally, and being portrayed as, quote, creatures of fantasy and not fully human. The series was created in consultation with a professor of Indigenous Studies, Tom Grayson Colonnais of Santi Sioux Nation, and in his words, Bellasara Native Lights represents Native American stories, images, and traditions in a responsible and sensitive manner, which is why I was feeling a little tentative about criticizing it. But I guess over time, what we consider good representation changes, and I do believe that how well the intentions came across was just kind of on the initiative of the artists. I don't know how much direction they were given, some are definitely better than others, and some just don't have anything to do with anything. The animal friends confuse things further. This is one of my favourite horses from this series, because I had a massive poster of her in my childhood bedroom, but it is kind of exemplary of the flaws of these cards. Tlingit represents the Tlingit people, from northwestern North America, on territories on the coast of the North Pacific. And she is styled after a lionfish, a fish native to the Indian Ocean. So again, the artwork isn't necessarily doing a lot, with no real cultural understanding demonstrated. I guess in its favour, I can say that I, being from where I'm from, where we are not necessarily taught about these things, was first introduced to the names of these communities through this card series, where I might not otherwise have been. And on Bellapedia, you could look up the different horses, and it would give you some historical and cultural background on the community, where I would imagine the professor's contribution was coming in. So I guess Native Lights was raising some awareness. But again, naturally over time, what we consider good representation changes, the bar is higher, and this is a good thing. In the world of Belasara, there was such a thing as legendary horses, who among the inhabitants of North of North are known for their brave and magical deeds. They are Fiona, Jewel, Nike, and Thunder. And Bella, I guess. Bella is there too. Forget all the previous herds. Ancient lights, northern lights, native lights, whatever, they're gone. There are five main herds in North of North, led by the legendary horses. Now these are the Hogwarts houses, keep up. Herd Shahazar, lighting the spark within. This herd is under Fiona's patronage and honor her creativity and imagination. Nomadic for a long time, Herd Shahazar are now settled at the Shahazar Castle in the Autumn Sands. Herd Aristos on a Nike's quest for excellence. Native to the Overguard Skylands, they are led by King Uranus and Queen Anemone. Jewel is the patron of Herd Islandar, who live on the islands of Equinesia in the east. They value generosity above all else. Only horses who show exceptional kindness are invited to join Herd Islandar, under their motto, Open Hearts, Open Hands. The Royal Herd of the Midwinter Mountains make their home in Valeric Castle. Herd Valeric unite under the motto, Brave Words, Brave Deeds and boldly stand up and speak out for themselves and others. They honour the ways of thunder. And there's also Herd Belisara for the people who are not brave, kind, creative or overachieving. Once, there were many great herds across the lands of North of North, but without Sigurd's protection, they had no choice but to find ways to hide from the wolf riders or become victims to their whims. The only herds that are free are under the protection of the legendary five. In the real world, on the other hand, these four girlies and boy are the marketing five. They appear most frequently on merch, 
They have that marketable range in appearances, they're just sort of the face of the brand. The five appear in almost every card series. The legendary five were also featured in my favourite Bellasara minigame, the spectacular jumping game. This was a simple obstacle course spacebar jumping game, but it was one of the few that allowed you to earn the in-game currency, one painful horseshoe at a time. The minigames were accessed through the map of Trails End. Other favourites of mine were Firelight Festival, kind of a mahjong light that ended with a firework display according to the tiles you managed to clear. Marvelous Magic Match, where you had five chances to find three of the same plush and got to keep the plush if you were successful to decorate your cottage. And Treasure's Hunt, which I only name for the music because it's very nostalgic. It was just a basic fish eating game. The proper expansion to the website would come in 2009 in the form of Belisara Adventures, an adventure game featuring cutified versions of the horses. I really like them. You, seemingly as Emma, were on a quest to restore magic to the lands of North of North by gardening. Different characters across the map would give you adventures and you could unlock more adventures through the tickets you would receive in card packs. I really don't have much to say about Belisara Adventures because pretty early on in my gameplay, I got stuck between four immovable objects, four crystals that I myself had put down, and I couldn't play it anymore. No, but the mini games, the stables, my cottage, and my horse, a fall you could personalize and adopt at it around the same time, were more than enough for me. So, as we've covered, Sigur is lost, and North of North lives in terror of the Wolf Riders, the most vicious of which is Ivena the Witch, until such time as Sigur's heir returns. I wonder if the original setup was supposed to imply that we were Sigur's heir, here to reunite the herds? I'm just not super clear on when and where lore shifts happen. Obviously, with every new card generation, there was new lore, expansion, and red cards. At any rate though, eventually we meet Sigurd's heir, her great-great-great-granddaughter, Emma Rowland. The girl on wings, as her legend goes. And this is literal because wings is her horse. Emma arrives in North of North with her cousin Colm who rides Soot, together with Deru, the nymph of Drazzlemare. Her great task now is to reunite the lost herds. I have to say, the film, which I watched in preparation for this video, does a number on the lore. For example, Nike's not mentioned as a legendary horse, probably because they didn't want to have to animate her. And Ivana is now the queen, the leader of the mere wolves, which she wasn't originally, I think. I think it was Feral who led the wolf riders. And in some versions, Ivana is Feral's sister, in others, she is Tiri's sister, who is one of the Valkyries. It's just a comics versus books versus film thing. I don't read comic books. This is a graphic novel. Oh, sorry. I'm serious. This is real literature. The film is rough. And really inadvertently funny, more than it intended to be. The quality of the animation means that the characters only ever look vaguely interested no matter what is happening. Any moment of potential tension is undercut by something supposedly funny happening on screen. My favourite thing about the film is that it confirms my theory about Sarah, which is that she's just a troll. Stuff go terribly wrong all the time in North of North, but she, a goddess, is just like, sorry, can't help you, but you, a teenager, can have a go. You're coming with me, right? No. She just shows up to the spring carnival and kidnaps a bunch of kids riding a carousel. I mean, she's not like this in the comics, but definitely elsewhere in the lore. Sarah is just chaotic neutral, I guess. I don't really recommend the film. It has a way of making the world of Belisara less magical, and I think its version of the lore is less cool. They also kind of give Deru the Aisha treatment, which is regretful. 
sadly, Belisara does not have the diversity it really ought to given its big world and borrowings from many different cultures. The last card series I'll talk about today is Sunflower. Sunflower has some of the most extensive lore, documented within the cards, in Belisara Tales, and a semi-release PDF novel known generally as Emma and the Lost Herds. Emma, Calm, and Deru must find and free the Lost Herds before Ivena reaches them. With the help of Johan, they set out across the lands of North of North to recover pieces of the Sunstone Pendant. Deep in the Jasmine Forest, through the maze, Petalhome, Herd Sunflower's castle may be found. Giant blooms stand in the throne room and have done for hundreds of years. These are the lost horses of Herd Sunflower. Herd Sunflower honor the virtue of stewardship under the motto, helping good things grow. And they follow in the ways of Sunflower, the herd founder. This is different to the legendary horses who are patrons. Their herds were in fact founded by Valeric, Aristos, Shahazar and Islandar, who I think are canonically dead, which is kind of weird given that it is kind of implied in the lore that North of North is already horse heaven. But shh, we don't talk about that. Anyway, at any rate, founders and patrons are different things, but often founders are patrons. In fact, there's quite a complicated hierarchy in the herds. The founders establish the herds, the patrons support the herds with money or gifts. Then each herd have a royal family. Queen Saffron and King Foxglove, together with their son and daughter Lavender and Foxtail, rule over herd Sunflower. Then there is the Chatelet, who runs the affairs of the castle. Camellia is the Châteline of Herd Sunflower. The Jester of Sunflower is Larkspur, one of my favourite horses ever, look at him. And the Minstrel is Blue Fiddle. Then there are pages who serve and stewards who oversee the servants. And then there is the nobility, knights, ladies, etc. I don't really think there was ever a purpose to the herd hierarchies. I've tried to look if there are particular games you can play using the cards themselves, but it doesn't appear to be so, especially as some herds have their own specific editions. In fact, originally there were some games that could be played using the cards, but they were pretty limited, often using the rarity scale as the main prompt, but rarity scales stopped appearing in later releases. The main thing that the cards could be used for, and this was an official purpose, was as oracle advice cards. I always found that quite daring for a children's product of the noughties, when often anything vaguely witchy was burnt at the stake by concerned parents. Nevertheless, this is the main reason I used to justify to myself why I still pick up Bella Sara cards in the year of our lord 2023. Another thing that was shifting around this time was that cards stopped being individually coded. Instead, you would receive a ticket or a bill with a code, and it would give you random horses online meaning you could end up with doubles, your online stable no longer matched your collection, and we couldn't even really trade with friends anymore. It used to be that I could give out horses I already had or didn't want, so my friends could register them, but it wasn't worth it with tickets because you just kind of wanted to hold on to all of them just in case this is the one that will give you the horse you want. This was such an irritation to me then that to this day, when I buy new Bella Sara cards and they're not individually coded, I get disappointed, just as a conditioned response, even though it's meaningless now either way. Interestingly, this shift appears to have taken place in response to criticism by trading card bloggers that Belisara was not a proper trading card game, because the single-use codes meant that the cards would not be circulated. I found this New York Times article that makes this point. This article also completely sidelines Gitter and is very dismissive of her original vision for the cards encouraging mindfulness in children. And this gets my hackles raised a little, because that is not how we as little girls in my Bella Sara circle were playing with these cards. As children, at least again in my circle, we weren't really trying to collect the set. We were going after specific horses we wanted, we would give each other duplicate codes, I knew a girl who only wanted Pegasi or Hippocamps for their core stables. Personally, I was invested in collecting cards with as many different borders as possible, and that's why I was specifically interested in promo cards. 
I mean, I would like to know how other people were engaging with the collection and trading aspect of it as children because maybe I'm wrong, but to me, it seems that this change was responding to criticism from the very male-dominated sphere of card collecting rather than their target audience of little girls. And again, this change genuinely kind of made it worse, and I personally began to lose interest in the online aspect of taking care of your horses, keeping up their happiness meter, etc. because they weren't my horses anymore, they were random. But maybe that was just my experience. I'd be really interested in takes on this. There is so much more Bella Sara to cover that I can't get to in this video. All the different toys and minis, the books, the comics, the changes in lore, the creepy stuff, the human characters, all the different artists that worked on the project, even the game I didn't really get into it properly. A combination of business and licensing difficulties meant that Bella Sara was on a steady decline through the 2010s, and the nail in the coffin was of course the Flash Purges. All that's left of Bella Sara now is just a website detailing what it used to be and a paid app that is apparently unfortunately not worth it. I just really miss this franchise and when I think about it, it was so big. And it breaks my heart that something that was this extensive, that had so many artists, so many people involved, never really had its due before it disappeared. I really wish someone would see the potentials of Bella Sara and take it up for a modern open world game for Switch or something. Maybe you play as Emma on her quest to recover all the lost herds, but I feel like Bella Sara is just too feminine coded to ever receive the kind of interest and funding that that would require. Maybe someday soon, some big horse girl YouTuber notices Bella Sara, Jenny, and decides to make a video about it that gets millions of views. And maybe that will summon Bella Sara from its slumber. But otherwise, I think it's lost. Heartbreaking. Bella Sara being relatively obscure, I don't really expect this video to get much attention. But nevertheless, let me know if you would be interested in more Bella Sara content. There's a lot of lore I would love to cover, and I would love an excuse to buy and read the books. If you are already thirsting for more, I would just like to recommend Sometimes Equestrian's video about Bella Sara where she covers the more business side of things that I didn't talk about. Thank you for soldiering through my very rambly reminiscence. Next video, we're back to form for the channel, but I will continue to experiment with new topics in the future. So, I hope you're looking forward to all of that, and I see you next time. Bye! Thank you.